Hello and welcome to this video lecture. So for this video lecture we're going to talk about one-dimensional continuous motion. So for this problem we are specifically talking about kinematics. And so kinematics is the study uh, of the relationship between position, velocity, and acceleration. Uh, and in this case we're looking in one dimension so it's a point that can move along a single line. We're going to start with position. So in a single dimension, uh, the position can be given by uh, a single dimension x. Uh, and so I'm going to have some origin point that's going to be fixed. It's my observation point. Uh, I'm going to have some particle p that's going to be moving left and right along this line. Uh, and in order to understand the position, I just need a single variable x that is the distance from the origin point to the point that is moving, point p. Uh, and that might be changing over time. It might be getting further away, it might be getting closer, uh, and generally x is, that's going to be right of the origin is going to be positive. If the point is left of the origin point, x would be negative. All right, so overall I'm going to have some function x uh, that is going to be uh, change according to time and as my position over time. Uh, I'm going to have some velocity as well. So velocity is the change in position over time. So our velocity v, uh, which also might be changing over time, uh, is going to be the derivative of the position over time. Uh, and then similarly, the acceleration uh, a at any one instant, or a of t, describing the acceleration over time, is the derivative of the velocity over time, uh, which is, in respect, the derivative of the derivative of position over time, uh, or the double derivative of the position over time. So we've got position. Uh, which is describing the position of the object, the velocity, which um, is going to describe the kind of speed of the object left and right over time, and acceleration, uh, which is the change in velocity over time. All right, so some shorthand symbols with all of this. We have position, x of t, that doesn't really have a shorthand. Um, for velocity, I can do v of t, uh, which is the change in, pos uh, change in position over time, uh, and I might also call that x dot of t. And so x dot, uh, that dot indicates the time derivative of x. Uh, this is going to be important when we have velocities in two directions. I'm going to have x dot and y dot when I, when I get to rectangular coordinate systems. So the acceleration a of t uh, is going to be x double dot of t is another shorthand symbol for that. All right, so moving on. Uh, we're going to talk about what we most often do in kinematics. Uh, in kin kinematics, we are almost always going to have the kind of following process. So given some position or velocity or acceleration over time, we've got some mathematical function that we have for one of those. Uh, we want to find the other two functions. So if I'm given position, I might want to find velocity over time and acceleration over time. If I'm given acceleration, I might want to find position and velocity. Uh, over time. The process of going back and forth between these functions uh, is the core of what we really do in kinematics. All right, so let's talk about going from position to velocity and then velocity to acceleration. So uh, first we need to either be given the position function x of t uh, or given enough information that we can find the mathematical function for this ourselves. So it might be given like the position at time equals zero, position at time equals one, position at time equals two, and I might need to just kind of figure out the mathematical function. Uh, so once I have x of t though, to get to velocity, uh, I simply need to take the derivative of x of t, that function, with respect to time. Uh, so say for example, uh, x of t, the position over time, is whatever uh, t is squared. That is my position in meters. Uh, to take the derivative of t squared, uh, well that would be uh, 2t is the derivative of t squared. So this will be x dot of t, or the velocity function, v of t. All right, so once I have that, to find the acceleration, I simply need to take the derivative of velocity with respect to time. Uh, it's going to be a third mathematical function that we're going to call x dot of t or the acceleration function a of t. Uh, I can use those interchangeably at this point. Uh, so for example, we had uh, t squared was our position over time. 2t might be the derivative of that or the velocity over the time. And then the derivative of 2t with respect to t is going to be just 2. So my acceleration would be like 2 meters per second squared. 
All right, so I'm taking derivatives to go from position to velocity, velocity to acceleration. Go in the other direction, so say I start with the acceleration function uh, and I want to find velocity and position based on that, I need to do the opposite of a derivative, which is going to be an integral. So starting out, I need to find my mathematical function for acceleration, x double dot of t or a of t, same thing in this case. Uh, and then to find velocity, I need to take the integral of that. So say we had our two that we had before. Uh, so the integral of two would be two t. But we also need to remember that we're gonna have a constant of integration. Um, so it's not really gonna be two t, it's gonna be two t plus c. And that c, in this case, is gonna be the initial velocity, or the velocity at time zero. Uh, what you're gonna to need to determine from details that are given to you in the problem. So you need to figure out whatever that initial velocity is. Uh, to go from velocity to position, we're simply going to take the integral of our new velocity function. So when we do this, we get yet another um, uh, constant of integration here. So we're going to call this third function x of t. It's our position. Uh, it's going to contain the constant of integration that I had before, so that v naught times t. Uh, and it's going to have the second one, which is the second, um, the second constant of integration is going to be the initial position of the object. So I had uh, 2t plus some constant. Uh, now I'm going to have uh, t squared plus that first constant times t plus some new constant of integration, which is my initial position. So going from acceleration to velocity to position, we're going to have integrals uh, to do each of those, and each time we're going to get some constant of integration, which is going to make it a little more complicated to go in this direction. All right, so in many instances, we have constant acceleration problems. So this happens when we have a constant force acting on an object. Uh, an example being gravity uh, exerts a constant force on any object. Uh, another one might be a motor that is kind of pushing forward at full speed, might be exerting a constant force. So when we have some acceleration over time, some function that is just a constant, it's just 2 meters per second squared or 9.81 meters per second squared, uh, I can go through my whole process. So the integral of this would be that acceleration times time plus that constant of integration, v naught, or initial velocity. Um, if I take the integral again, uh, the integral of that function, the velocity function, is going to be one-half that acceleration times time squared plus initial velocity times time plus initial position. Uh, and that third equation gives me the position at any time that I plug into my equation. Uh, so these are the first three of my constant acceleration equations, and I can only use this if A is a constant. Uh, I need to use my calculus and do the integrals, do the derivatives if I have a non-constant uh, acceleration. So I can pull one additional equation out of that, and I'm going to do it using those three previous equations. So if I uh, start by looking at the velocity equation and solve that velocity equation for t, it would wind up with the following. Uh, so my velocity at any time minus initial velocity, or uh, divided by the acceleration would give me the time where that occurs. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to take that t and I'm going to plug it into my acceleration equation. So 1 half a t squared plus velocity, uh, initial velocity times t uh, plus initial position. And I just plug in my new value for t. Uh, and then I solve this whole thing. So simplify, use lots of algebra that I'm not go, going to go through here. And we wind up with the following formula. So the velocity at any given time uh, is going to be equal to or sorry, velocity at any given time squared is going to be equal to the initial velocity squared plus 2 times the rate of acceleration times the change in position. So with the current position minus my initial position. Uh, and that relates uh, position, velocity, and acceleration without the time unit that we had in all our other equations. So with that, that's the end of the lecture for now. I hope to see you again.